Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 7th, 2016. This first one is from my friend Ray, Papa22, and it is BMW introduces SOS call system for motorcycles. Emergency call systems for cars have been around for a while with services like OnStar automatically dialing for help if they detect a crash. Now BMW wants to offer the same security and safety to motorcycles. The automaker announced that its intelligent emergency call system offered in Europe for its cars for more than 15 years will now be an option for European BMW motorcycles for 2017. Um, people may say, well, yeah, what's the big deal? You can call on a cell phone or something like that if you need help. But the nice thing about this is if a crash happens and the motorcycle is not upright and it's laying still, it's got sensors and things like that that can detect a crash or um, if you possibly could need trouble just in an automated way and actually dispatch help and they say in most instances even when a rider is still uh, basically uh, you know not seriously hurt the uh, responders tend to get there 40 to 50 percent faster because of the way the dispatch works so I guess they have a more direct line or something like that so I could actually see this if they incorporate this on top-end motorcycles saving a few lives uh, I had a buddy that lost his life the last uh, friend that I had that lost their life they were basically in a crash out in the middle of nowhere all by themselves and something like this. Could it have helped? Not knowing for sure, but when you're out there by yourself, especially if you're laying there unconscious, getting help there just a little bit earlier could make a big difference. So if you get a chance, check this one out. And next, um, this is from my friend Robert Bangalore Bobble. Dawn of Revolution in Urban Mobility, First Man Flight of the Volocopter, VC200. I I did a video on this I think in sometime in 2014 on the Volocopter I've done so many of these the Volocopter I like because of the fact it has like I don't know about a dozen uh, dozen or so or more of those rotors so if one would fail it still seems like you would still have well over 80 percent of your power left and I do like that fact but they actually do have it working in flight now obviously if they do go to sell it this thing is going to cost a fortune probably in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars or something like that. But I was thinking more like if they made a two-seater version, which it seems like this is, um, they could use it more for a rental craft or something like that, or maybe even have uh, multiple owners, maybe 10 people going to buy it, like people do with airplanes. You know, they have these uh, airplane clubs where a group of four to six people actually own a portion of the airplane and just, uh, yeah, use it for commuting or something like that. So that would be the way to do it. I mean, not everybody can afford a, a, a rich vehicle like that. I won't play the video. I was going to play some of the video here, but it seems like every time I play any kind of video that it ends up getting dinged for copyright. So far they haven't um, taken the audio out of any of my TDD reports, but I do have to watch what I'm doing. It looks like the robots are getting better and better at detecting that kind of stuff. So anyway, next article. This is from the pages of Popular Mechanics. Watch an armor-piercing round shatter into pieces when it hits metal foam. There's a picture here it's a gif picture and it shows a 30 at 6 armor piercing round smashing into one inch of this uh, new kind of foam metal and it just basically shatters into nothingness so they're not talking about a wimpy little round or anything like that as a matter of fact the uh, modern army round is a 308 which is the same type of bullet but not quite as powerful a 30 at 6 is actually slightly more powerful than a 308 but yeah the they talk about the fact that yeah a half inch um, of regular armor plating can stop the bullet which is not as thick as this one inch of the foam material the foam metal but you gotta realize this foam metal is mostly air so if you had armor that somebody would have to actually be wear or be carrying wearing or being carrying around with them half inch steel plate armor plate is really really heavy so if this metal foam is mostly air it's gonna be a lot easier it may be a little bit bulky or something like that but for a chest plate or something like that sure be nice because uh... I don't think there's just any practical way to wear something on, on your chest of conventional armor that could stop an armor piercing round, especially of that size. It just, it's it's not possible. But this with this uh, new foam material, and uh, it says the CM, the uh, foam materials are lighter and more effective than traditional metal armor, likely including AR500. I guess that's a type of armor, but it's unknown exactly how much better they are. The university has not divulged what CMF, which is the metal foam, is made from almost certainly for security reasons and uh, they said it could also make a great bumper for a car if you actually put a bumper on a car made of this material you could have a collision at 28 miles an hour and uh, 
have it soak up so much of the force of the collision it would seem equivalent to a five mile per hour collision. Um, so maybe in the future we'll look for a little bit more of that uh, metal foam. I guess the, the basic idea of metal foam is this is not like something real new as far as the idea of metal foam. It's been around for a while, but this particular making it this way and making it so even with the tiny bubbles, I guess, is the trick to make it uh, effective for armor piercing rounds and stuff against armor piercing rounds and things like that. And last up from the pages of Popular Science, um, sometimes I do like to promote stuff. Uh, I have no connection to this or anything like that, but this is an um, this is called this indie sci-fi movie has a better space station than many blockbusters. These are people that produce uh, science science fiction shorts, and I saw the other one that they had before that. Um, what was the name of it? It's called Blind Spot. If you get a chance, just look at movie short Blind Spot and watch it. It's a maybe five six minute science fiction short movie too, and it's really cool. Uh, I believe I watched it on Vimeo, so go to Vimeo and watch that. And they're just asking for people to contribute just a small amount, if you would like to, for them to finish up the special effects for the shadows and the grass. And if you look at the introduction of this, uh, this girl wakes up on a space station, and all she has for company is this robot explaining things to her. And the space station, the way it is, I mean, they've got enough um, special effects done to actually render this part out really good. And it's, it's cool work. They do good work, good writing, good ideas. I love the short blind spot. If uh, they, all they're asking is people to contribute a little bit of money to uh, do the finishing touches on this and to, to pay the designers to do the 3D effects because, I mean, you don't want to do something like this with a really good storyline and especially based on what I've seen in the past and then have the special effects just be totally lame. It looks like they want to do this uh, a, a really class job and maybe if fans support them even with a few bucks or sending them five bucks or something like that, they might even be able to pre present full-length movies or something even longer, but I think it's well worth supporting just based on what I saw. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Um, if you have time in your mom's life, spend some time with her if you can, because when she's gone, it's too late after that. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.